Shannon Sharp drags Diddy, Oprah, and Tyler Perry for trying to cancel his show. 2024, y'all. Welcome back to the channel. Appreciate all the love and support with you guys coming over. Uh, Things are getting wild in the entertainment world, with tensions rising as Shannon Sharp testifies in Diddy's ongoing trial. And trust me, Oprah is not happy about this. Stay tuned, because we're about to dive into all the explosive details. You don't want to miss this. The podcast just like blew up, and he be having everybody named mom on there. So we're going to check this video out. I'll leave the link to the channel on Miss, Misty channel in the uh, description. So we ain't going to waste no more time. Let's jump right into it. Is that for some reason people come to me and I don't look at them with judgy eyes. I have no pre predetermined notion or preconceived notions and they open up to me. That's what they're upset about. Shannon Sharp's testimony has sent shockwaves across Hollywood, and now Oprah Winfrey is furious. Sources say she's been working behind the scenes to keep certain conversations quiet, but Shannon's decision to testify may have unraveled all of that. Because if you look at a lot of these people that's been on other podcasts, so Shannon Sharp's podcast club Shay Shay has been blowing up ever since Cat Williams' interview. And he has had many explosive interviews this year alone. Now let's just say that some folks in the industry are not loving this one bit. This is because the interviews have exposed many secrets about some of the industry's most popular and powerful people, including Diddy, Oprah, and Tyler Perry. It looks like Shannon is now dragging them for filth, exposing them for not only trying to cancel the show, but also trying to ruin his life for not taking down interviews after they asked him to. Ever since Shannon's podcast blew up earlier this year, he's had no problem exposing the hidden truths of the industry. Oprah, who's already been dealing with criticism from her falling out with Monique, seems to be facing another storm. So these videos of Diddy with Justin Bieber when he was only 15 years old are resurfacing. And the one thing that I want to ask is, why was a 40 year old hanging around with a 15 year old why did no one think that was an issue or a red flag and also listen to what he says in this clip um they're having the times of their lives like 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 the, you know where we hanging out and what we doing um we we can't really disclose but um it's definitely a 15 year old's dream um you know i i, I have been given custody of him. You know, he yeah. signed the Usher. Uh, I, I had legal guardianship. Uh, Diddy with 15-year-old Justin Bieber raises a question that what a 40-year-old is doing with a 15-year-old. It's a big red flag for the viewers. It looks like Shannon is now claiming that he also has more dirt on these people and he's going to leak it if they don't back down. Y'all better get in the room because Shannon is not here to play. Wait, Shannon what? Sharp has had the world in the chokehold ever since he dropped his interview with Cat Williams at the start of the year. It was pure chaos and that chaos Chaos has remained since that interview, and we have seen the dark side of the industry that we rarely get to see. With all the juicy secrets that he spilled, it's no surprise that some powerful people want the podcast shut down. Here, Diddy is asking a 17-year-old as to why he doesn't want to hang out anymore. Starting to act different, huh? No, you, no. Ain't, you ain't been calling me and hanging out the way we used to hang out. Well, I mean, you haven't. I mean, you try to get in contact with me, you know, through all my, you know, business, you know, partners and whatnot, mm -hmm. but. You, you never really got, got my number, so. Right, okay. My number? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, yeah. My number. yeah, yeah, yeah. In his testimony, Shannon reportedly detailed the inner workings of the industry and hinted at things Oprah and Diddy would rather keep buried. But what's truly shocking is Oprah's reaction behind the scenes. It's starting to act different, huh? You, no, you, no, ain't, no. you ain't been calling me and hanging out the way we used to hang out. Well, I mean, you haven't. I mean, you try to get in contact with me, you know, through all my, you know, business, you know, partners and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But. You, you never really got, got my number, so. Correct. Okay. My number? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah, yeah. My number. yeah, yeah, yeah. After Monique exposed her, it was clear that Oprah doesn't take well to public challenges. Now, with Shannon's testimony, her attempts to keep everything under control seem to be spiraling out of hand. Kind of ripple. Um, I didn't think it was going to move me in the direction. I'm glad it did. Um, I understand what comes along with that lie. But if you if you remember, 
In the same interview, Shannon talked about all the crazy stuff he's been dealing with since Cat Williams' interview went viral earlier this year. He had a conversation with Cam Newton and shared why celebrities are comfortable enough to spill all their secrets on his podcast. As Shannon himself said in a recent interview, I didn't expect this kind of ripple effect, but I understand what comes with speaking the truth. Now we're all waiting to see just how far Oprah and Diddy will go to protect their secrets. And explained that before every interview, he makes it clear to his celebrity guests that they don't have to talk about certain topics if they don't want to, which makes them comfortable enough to tell their own story. I ask, I say, is there anything that you don't want to talk about? I always ask the guests that. Sometimes they say, well, uh, I would appreciate if we not talk about this. Right. Cool, no problem, because I believe you can tell your story without saying something Mash. negative. But yes, I believe, I believe a person that's been in a business, that's been doing something 10, 15, 20, 30 years. One thing's for sure, Shannon Sharp isn't backing down. His platform has grown stronger than ever, and his willingness to share the truth, even when powerful figures like Oprah and Diddy are trying to stop him, has only increased his following. Eat the dogs, eat the cats, eat, eat the dogs, <laughs> eat the cats. And did Shannon Sharp beat the cat on Instagram Live? Plus, we've got a VMAs recap for you. Welcome to Side Dish. Hey. There are rumors involving Shannon Sharp Sharp, asking if he had really gone live on Instagram to beat up a cat. Then they teased the upcoming content, promising a VMA's recap before officially welcoming viewers to the show, Side Dish. Pop, pop, pop. Yeah, even like the starter pistols that the marathon people took off with. Yeah. yeah, just those. I think they would appreciate that upstairs. We got the ham horn. Pam, pam, pam. Oh, upstairs. The co chimed in with a playful comment about getting starter pistols like those used in marathons, thinking the audience would appreciate it. But for now, they had to settle for the air horn. They don't even know, they don't even know about our whole upstairs fiasco. No. We, we, we dropped little like subliminals, yeah. you know, and people have been watching this episode maybe three. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They might be up on it, yeah, but other yeah. than that, it's just an inside joke for us. Just just a... They both reflected on how the joke had been dropped in past episodes, hinting that loyal viewers might understand, but the co added that it's really more of an inside joke for the people in their corporate team. <laughs> people in corporate and sales. What's up, guys? Thanks for checking out the, uh, what is today, the Thursday episode of Side Dish? Oh, it's that... almost... Hey, it's 48 Hour Friday. There's that. Mm -hmm. There is that indeed, man. How's your day going so far? My day's going good, dude. I'm back in the gym. I'm training again. Ankle's feeling pretty good, so I was able to get both hours in because I'm a nerd and I have nothing else to do. Uh, did a little writing session with my writing partner. It's been a great day. I'm proud of you, man. I, I dressed up for gym. They then thanked everyone for tuning in, pointing out it was Thursday, what they call 48-hour Friday, on the show. They turned to their co-workers and asked how their day was going. So right. then I had to drive to it, a, 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 like a, one of those rapid ones, because uh -huh. I charge it at home, but yeah. I have it set to where it doesn't charge during the daytime. Got so it. I had to drive to a place. I was like, you know what? I'm going to like get a bunch of stuff done. Mm -hmm. And then I had like a really long, one-hour-long conversation with somebody who was trying charging their car next to my car, and that was the duration of the time in which I would have been able to get all my little clerical work I needed mm -hmm. to get done. Mm -hmm. And then when I got home, I sat there nicely in my gym clothing uh, <laughs> doing that work. So They shared their own experience, mentioning how they had dressed for the gym, but their electric car hadn't charged overnight. This forced them to find a fast charging station, where they ended up having a long conversation with someone. By the time the car was ready, they had missed their workout window. Out of baby oil and lubricant inside his home, a thousand bottles of it. Former inmate and director and founder of Wall Street Prison Consultants, Larry Levine, joins me now. Larry, welcome to the show. Thanks for being with me. Glad to be with you. So this jail's conditions, you know, I mean, have been described as dirty, notorious for mice, maggots, inmate violence, power outages. I mean, you spent 10 years in 11 different facilities, so you know what life is like for him right now. Despite the serious charges against Diddy, which include allegations of trafficking and forced labor, Diddy seemed composed as he greeted his family with smiles and waves. Take us behind well, the scenes. Was also, I was also at MDC Los Angeles. It's like a cookie cutter of the MDC in New York. So yeah, I do know. But he's sitting in the shoe. He's in the hole. And this guy is going through loneliness, anxiety, desperation. He's on suicide watch. And they hand out like psych meds, like their M&Ms to these inmates to try to get them to cope with what's going on. So his entire existence is to sit in this little cell, essentially. 
Reports from inside the courtroom reveal that prosecutors have seized an enormous amount of evidence, including 96 electronic devices from multiple locations, all tied to the investigation. He can shower three times a week. He's not getting any, any real visits. If his lawyer does a legal visit, they have to come upstairs into the special housing unit to see him. Now, have you seen these reports about all these commissary items? They say that he could buy any of those. Uh, what, what was one of them? Uh, steak or something? Did... Ribeye, steak, yeah. I mean, all kinds of nonsense. He's in the shoe, people. He... As it stands, Diddy is being held at the Brooklyn Detention Center with no signs that his legal battle will end anytime soon. His attorneys are fighting an uphill battle and the stakes couldn't be higher. He's in a special housing unit. He cannot buy things off the regular commissary list. So this is rocking have, his world right I mean, now. He can buy a radio. Yeah, this is rocking his world right now. What about treatment from other inmates, Larry? I'm curious he, in that too, because he, we know that they don't take kindly to those who are accused of hurting women or children. They're not minors well, that we know of, but if he makes it he, to general population, how is he, he treated? Make, look. If he makes it to GP, general population. From courthouse crowds to legal debates about bail, this case has captured the nation's attention. And with rumors of even more explosive revelations, this trial could be one of the biggest in recent history. Stay tuned as we continue to follow the story. Tell you um, my thoughts reading the 14 page indictment yesterday were that um, there is gonna be, there are a lot of people in Hollywood were probably worried about uh, which Diddy parties they were at and what was going on. Uh, that's not to say that they were necessarily even involved in any of the things uh, that are alleged by the U.S. Attorney's Office. But if you're at that party and it turns out that that's when uh, he set up one of these freak off. Uh... Diddy, now an inmate in a Brooklyn detention center, was denied bail yet again. The judge ruled that despite a $50 million bail package, Diddy posed too high a flight risk. Uh, sex parties or that it was going on uh, in another room and you didn't know about it, there's a good chance <laughs> that you're going to be called by the U.S. Attorney's Office. If you're, and certainly if you were involved, um, you would get a call because they're going to want to know everything you want to know and may even want you to be a witness. I just think, you know, we're just starting to scratch the surface of what this case, uh, who it's, this case is going to touch and involve. And the, uh, and the, the feds have said that this is, remains an open investigation. There could be more charges. For Diddy, there could be more charges for other people. The U.S. The Attorney's Office suggests that several high-profile figures could be called as witnesses or even face charges if they attended any of these parties. People involved, um, and usually the way this works is once they find out other people are involved or were witnesses, they bring them in and they sort of lean on them and it's sort of like you're going to cooperate with us or there is a possibility that you could face charges. So. Uh, this is going to be a, um, a, a slow developing uh, a case here because we're just getting started I, and I don't see how this trial begins anytime before next year. As the investigation continues, the fallout for Diddy grows. His defense team is preparing for what could be a long battle with a trial date tentatively set for next year. You're looking at a mother that is broken. Mm -hmm. The worst pain ever that a mother, that a parent could ever feel. Her father and myself and the family, you're looking at it. Amber's mom shared with me that the word over and over again in her mind is preventable. The event in Michigan, led by Oprah Winfrey and Kamala Harris, aimed to rally support for their cause. Things took an emotional turn when a family affected by restrictive abortion laws in Georgia shared their heartbreaking story. The mother, visibly distressed, expressed that her daughter's death was preventable, emphasizing the tragic consequences of such laws. Abortion bans have been passed that criminalize health care providers. In a couple of states, prison for life, Oprah prison for life in a couple of states for a doctor or a nurse who provides health care. That was one of the most emotional moments from this uh, event. Oprah was crying. I mean, p many, many people in the audience were crying. And it really took me back, I mean, obviously, to 
the Oprah Winfrey that everyone had in their living rooms for, you know, decades. Oprah Winfrey was deeply moved by the family's story, shedding tears as they discussed the personal loss caused by the abortion bans. Uh, will this be effective? Well, I think the abortion issue is effective. Whether Oprah is the person that brings it to us, Kamala Harris is the person that brings it to us. The thing is, stripping women of their rights in this country was always inevitably going to lead to death. And Amber's a perfect example of that. The doctors knew exactly what to do when she arrived at the hospital and they waited, they waited 20 hours to do the necessary DNC and she died because they waited too long. It's not that they didn't know how to, what to do. It's not that there was a crisis. Abortion, once seen as a deeply personal issue, has now become a matter of life and death, affecting healthcare access and women's lives in tragic ways. It was a completely, as her mother said, preventable death. And that happens when you take people's rights from them and you say all of this fits into this one tank when it doesn't. Our health care is, is our bodies. It's our lives. It's our livelihoods. Quite frankly, it's an economic issue. I don't know why we keep separating the economy from abortion. How many people are sitting at your kitchen table is a kitchen table issue. So abortion is center. Whether Oprah brings it to us or not, abortion will be center. The conversation also touched on the broader impact of these issues, with speakers noting how abortion restrictions affect not only health, but also economic security. This, to this These election. events are, um, you know, part of a strategy that the Harris campaign mm -hmm. is, is putting out there, which is to largely avoid doing interviews. They're not necessarily settings that put her, that where she shines. Mm -hmm. So they're doing this instead. And, and this was very <clears throat> different for her. Mm -hmm. um, might it work? Will this be enough? I mean, we have, uh, you know, less than 50 days until yeah. the next election, so. Um, it, the answer is it is not enough. It will work, partly. So um, <laughs> let, let me explain. This event, while powerful, was also strategic for Kamala Harris. Her campaign is using such opportunities to connect with voters emotionally while avoiding traditional interviews, which some feel don't showcase her strengths. Oh, this, is great. this is a great event. <laughs> this is a great event, and it's good for her. And and listen, especially with. Oprah and an Oprah audience, this is really, really important for Kamala Harris because Donald Trump has every base voter he's going to get. She does not have every base voter she can get. And she's needs about 10 points more uh, black voters in places like Georgia to be where she needs to be to win these swing states. So these are incredibly important moments for her. For many undecided voters, they are still waiting to hear more from Harris herself. Despite Trump's controversial positions, his base knows who he is, while many feel they haven't seen enough of Kamala Harris's vision. A more than one salacious story. Right. That's what I believe. So if they say they want to stay away from it, but if they want to tell something, who am I to say, no, nah, I don't do, you can't tell that. Right. People, are, uh, Cam. Now, one major thing that the haters have been using against Shannon is how he is not a real journalist. In his recent interview, Shannon made it clear that he is not a journalist and never claimed to be one. For those who might not know, Shannon is a highly successful retired NFL player. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. What do you think Oprah's next move will be? Can she actually silence Shannon Sharp, or has he already exposed too much? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for all the latest updates on this trial and more industry scandals.